It's Friday and Casey Pine and Hello. here with Friday Spy Curious, trademark name, to talk about statement taking, evidence gathering and a whole lot of fun private investigator stuff. When my son was a young boy, he went to one of those arcade game things and he came home with his prize and I said, son, what did you win? And he said, dad, I won these maggots in slime and i thought that is just so great i was so proud of him he did that that's old-fashioned now now they have eyeballs in slime at those things so they are really great and we are going to be grosser than that today in our show for going into people's trash bins and finding evidence much more grosser than that we'll see you in 30 seconds Casey Pine and Mike Evans with this week's episode of Spy Curious. I think we've got a comment already and I am willing to bet it's Renee saying hi. What do you reckon, Casey? Do you think so? Maybe you're wrong. It's not Renee. It's not Renee. It's Jamie. G'day, Jamie. How are you going? <laughs> How's things down in Victoria? But I'm sure there's someone followed it up. And it's Kelly. G'day, Kelly. How are you going? <laughs> and Jennifer. And Jennifer. <laughs> Really great to see you. Thanks for tuning in. We've got a really big program this week. I've got to get straight into it. Otherwise, we'll never get um, through in our half an hour limit that we've got. I might have to pay more money. That would be disastrous. So um, I'll bring it up. The big news this week is there's been an Australian tender called for training of uh, investigators for ASIC. <laughs> Oops, sorry. Uh, who was that? <laughs> Right, okay. So ASIC have it called a tender to train in the peace model training. And it tells you all about it here. And if you're a registered training organisation, excuse me, <clears throat> you can apply for that tender and teach people with a double degree in accounting all about how to take statements. This show's about taking statements. It's the 131st program we've ever done about taking statements, which is boring for everybody else, but it's really exciting for us. So if it's good enough for ASIC and people with a double degree in accounting, Pat Flynn, Casey Pine and myself, on our um, March Friday uh, annual meeting for our AirLAP members, we'll be putting on that presentation 90 minutes of the peace model and cognitive interview for free for our members and you who are watching now. Totally free. You'll get a statement of attendance and statement of completion if you answer the questions that we give you in that program. So what ASIC are paying a mitzah for you, just because you're an Australian Security Academy graduate student and you're participating in our annual general meetings, we'll get it totally for free. So when you apply for a government um, investigation position with ASIC or whoever, and they're umming and ahhing between you and someone else, and they have to pay $195 for someone to go and sit through that training, or you're there or already got it for free, everybody's a winner. So keep that in mind, people. There'll be more information about it next week. Our CPD program for March will be on the peace model, which ASIC thinks so important they're putting all their accountants with a double degree in accounting through it. So you don't have a double D in a degree in account. You don't need one. You only have to know how to do the cognitive interview for a suspect or for a witness in relation to what you're going to be taking a statement about. So a lot of fun that we're going to be having in um, our CPD program on the 4th of March, I think it is, Casey. I'm not sure, Friday the 4th of March, but I've been updated on it, yeah, been updated on it next week. So that's Mike Evans's big news for this week. 
Casey, you've got a video to show us in relation to the theme of today's program. What's it about? Well, let's have a look. Avid Investigator is about helping people find closure. Information is our main commodity. In a world seemingly dazzled by the latest proprietary databases and state-of-the-art electronic gadgets, a simple garbage pool remains an often overlooked avenue of inquiry. The number one reason public servants are sacked from their employment is inappropriate access to government databases, which is electronically recorded. The humble garbage audit can deliver documentary records. These include stolen property receipts, stolen property, packaging, and or other relevant physical evidence in regards to other offences such as tender rigging, corruption or ghost invoicing. Federal and state police use these garbage audits extensively. Before you head out the door, make sure you're familiar with the law as it varies from state to state. You should be aware of local regulations that prohibit garbage pools. Regulations will generally relate to abandoned property issues. One of our academy instructors, Noel Lee, teaches an example of abandoned property using the beer bottle story. Like many states now, South Australia has a cash recycle system. The Scouts promoted the leaving of beer bottles out for collection in their local area and they took them to the recyclers for cash fundraising. A group of non-Scouts started going around and intercepting the beer bottles placed in boxes on the footpath for collection and the Scouts lost out on the income and complained to the police. SA Polk conducted a door knock of some areas and asked residents what intention they had with the beer bottles as to the recipients. The unanimous reply was, we don't care who takes them, we just want them gone. Therefore, the bottles having been abandoned in a public place, the footpath, were anybody's to take away. So don't forget, the office, factory, hotel room or domestic garbage bin is a wealth of evidentiary information. My word it is, and you heard it there. The number one reason public servants get themselves into trouble and lose their job is access to confidential databases. Now, one of the most evidentiary important areas that are used in relation to gathering evidence against public servants that are corrupt or doing tender rigging or stealing from the workplace or are doing something wrong is through a garbage audit, a trash pool, whatever you want to call it. People throw stuff away and don't give it a second thought. Now, what are we looking for when we go and we do a garbage audit? Well, there's an enormous amount of things that we're going to be looking for or that we will find. So it might be in a skip. It might be in an office rubbish bin. The things that you might see, ammunition boxes, <laughs> office supplies, that sort of thing. People will throw stuff in their home domestic garbage bins that they've taken from work and put them there. I'll come back to more of that to give context in a moment. When you do the garbage pool, you must have authorization from someone to do it, your employer, your boss, whatever. Um, in some circumstances, a search warrant may be required if for those of you that are in government investigations. But you're going to be finding all sorts of different kinds of information in amongst a whole lot of horrible stuff. So I'm not teaching you how to get the rubbish out of the, out of the bin today. I'm assuming that we've already got it. That's another whole training program. Assuming that we've already got it, let's have a look at some of the concepts that we've got to go through when we do the garbage pool. Here's the first one. It's really important to wear a safety coat and safety gloves when you are doing the garbage audit back at the um, office. So you reach into the garbage and our first thing we pulled out is a bag of dog shit. So it looks like I'd say that's probably Alsatian or German Shepherd, we'll just chuck it on the scales here and that comes in at 800 grams, a pretty good effort by our dog. Put it in our bag and tagged evidence bag. Now when you put it in the evidence bag there is no uniform way of marking the evidence bag. You can write directly on the bag, 
with the day, date, time and location and the weight. And you can put your name and contact number on there as well. And you can seal that and put it in your evidence bag. Now, some people use labels. I tend to write directly onto the plastic evidence bag before I seal it. Then I will take a photograph of it in situ. And then, of course, as always, with every piece of evidence we get in my notebook, I will record the evidence, what it is, the day, date and time that I found it, the location, and why I was doing it in relation to what investigation. That goes into my notebook. Okay, so that's part one. All right, why we would weigh it, I don't know. It might have something to do with animal cruelty or something like that. All we're doing is just basic demos here today and um, just having a look at the issue. You're going to find that in the garbage pool and quite often it's not bad for you. So have fun with that one. All right, you must be prepared for that. So investigations has some grubby work and garbage pools is one of them. Let's have a look at a couple of positions vacant for licensed private investigators. Uh, advertised this week, very fact are looking for licensed investigators for factual investigations in Western Australia. So it's a great opportunity if you're a licensed investigator in Western Australia to get um, into the industry with very fact. So get in touch with them. All these jobs people are up here on our Facebook page. If you just type a Facebook search for Australian private investigator, corporate and government investigation jobs, you're going to see job opportunities like that one with Verifact in Western Australia. Kerrigan's are seeking licensed investigators in North Queensland. That's Mackay and Townsville. So um, great opportunity if you're in North Queensland to get working uh, in surveillance or factual investigation for one of the oldest, most established investigation agencies in Australia who I once worked for. So that's down there at Kerrigan. So great opportunities there. Um, let's have a look at part two, what we do when there's syringes. Can't wait. Syringes are a very common occurrence during the garbage audit. Here we have six syringes and an eyedropper and none of these syringes have an actual needle in it, which was very nice of our subject to do that for us. So always wear protective gloves and don't reach in without looking. Yes, that eyedropper, it looks as if it's got human growth hormone in it. Give that some special attention later on. But once again, we found these utensils in the bag. I'm just grouping them for demonstration purposes. That eyedropper would be actually labelled separately in the real world. And there is no universal evidence bag labelling method you follow your organisation's policies and procedures in relation to what you write on the bag. Where it was found, the day, date and time, what it is, who found it. So the description is very important in relation to the chain of evidence. Then a photograph and notes in the notebook complete the process, as always. Did you notice how I recognise that human growth hormone straight away? Now, that's experience as an investigator. But what do you do if you forgot your litmus paper? Oh, you're in trouble now. Bloodborne pathogens are very dangerous. So here we've got a um, bandage that's got blood all over it. I haven't got my litmus paper with me. So uh, let's have a look. Yep, that's O positive. So... Always carry litmus paper with you when you're doing your garbage audit and be safe at all times. She's wishing she's somewhere else right now. Gets worse as we get in. That's my blood type. Oh, yeah. positive. All right, okay. <laughs> Do not try that at home, people. That's entertainment. Our 30 minutes a little bit more interesting, okay? Uh, very fact are looking for licensed factual investigators in Melbourne. There's an opportunity of a lifetime, people. This only got advertised this week. It was sent straight from very fact to us. Get in touch with them. Get on to our Facebook page. It's a Casey there, but it's a Casey with a K. It's not our Casey with a C. So um, get in touch with very fact. <laughs> Thanks, George. <laughs> Get in touch with Verifact for that job opportunity for factual investigations down there in Melbourne. Um, now, I don't know why I've got Kerrigan's there, but it's Quantum Corp. Quantum Corp uh, looking for uh, investigators in Brisbane. 
So again, if you want a job with Quantum Corp doing investigations, I'll show you one more time, go to our Australian Private Investigator Corporate and Government Investigator Job Vacancies page. Now, that really should be enough of me carrying on about garbage audits. Casey, you've got um, an OSINT tip for us this week. I do. Um, often times we are asked to do bullying and harassment cases and we often get phone numbers that we have no idea who the person is or no idea how to verify it. Uh, and I have some tips on, to, on how to find the owner of a phone number. So the first point of call I usually do is my Google dorking tactics. So I've put in my, I'm doxing myself as usual here, <laughs> put in my own phone number. And there I've come straight up, Casey Pine Marketing. It's not, the information there isn't very good. I'm not in New South Wales, um, but at least that's my name. So that's a good start. And there wasn't very, so there's only four results, which is good. So you'd write down those results. And I just want to show you, I actually went into Reverse Australia. There are a lot of websites out there where you can look up a phone number and they're not very accurate here in Australia. So oops, I'll show you, well, I'm adding an overlay. I'll show you here, we have Reverse Australia. I've typed in my own phone number that I've had for many, many years. And there is a whole bunch of addresses and names there that are associated with that number but they are not me. So just keep that in mind that just because if you type a phone number into a website, it doesn't mean that the name that comes up is the person. So obviously with the Google Doc, we know it's me. And so that's handy, <laughs> but that's some information there. And in the real world, you would still keep verifying and write all those names down and do a whole bunch more verifying. So where do I look next? Another one of the places I like to look is on Skype. So if you start up a Skype account, I've just, this is my um, soft puppet Skype account. You just go new contact and add new contact and you type in a person's phone number. And sometimes it can bring up a person's name once you've typed in the phone number. So that's only happened probably about three or four times where a phone number has brought up a name for me. It's more likely to work with an email address because most people associate their Skype accounts with an email address, not necessarily a phone number, but it's always worth a try because as I said, it has worked for me a couple of times. And now my absolute favorite is this one that I'm going to show you. And it is using someone's pay ID um, with your bank account to see if that number is directly related to someone. So if you go into your banking app, and I've just taken some screenshots today of my banking app, and you go to pay someone new and select how you want to pay them and enter a pay ID. So you click enter a pay ID and you put in the person's phone number, the phone number that you have, and there's my number again. And as you can see, when you click check pay ID, up pops my name. So that is a fantastic way to verify. This is banking records. And this didn't send any flags towards my bank account or anything. It just brought up that information. I can create the contact and pay myself from there. So it's a really good way to check a phone number. I used that three times this afternoon, Casey. Yep. What a great tip. <laughs> Hang on, we've got a comment. Who says awesome tip, Casey? Hang on. <laughs> yeah, Jamie, that's a beautiful, that's a great one, Case. Yeah, my word. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> they love that one. Oh boy. Okay, people. I'm gonna be showing you my job of the week very soon. Okay, I won't be long and I'm going to be showing you Mike Evans' job of the week. It's the place I want to work. But before I do that, I don't oh, mind working at Brookside or MJM. Um, so Brookside looking for licensed investigators for general insurance down in Melbourne, people. Get in touch with them. It's on our Facebook page, all their details where you can find out about that job. So Brookside are looking for that. And MJM are looking for licensed investigators in Darwin and the Northern Territory. Once again, you can see both those jobs here on this Facebook page. 
Now, as we get worse and worse and more gross with our um, dumpster diving, let's have a look at what happens when we encounter drugs. You will find various packets of pill containers in the rubbish still containing some pills. Now, just because they've got a label on the pill containers, it doesn't mean that's what's in there. People swap things around and, you know, use containers to keep things dry. It might say they're headache tablets or it might say they're pingers or it might say um, that um, they're penis enlargement pills. You don't know what they are. So all you can do is describe you have found a container which is yellow with a white lid containing 50 pills or a container which is yellow with a white lid containing 32 pills. It is marked penis enlargement pills on the label and has the subject's name on it if that is the case. If it's not the case, that doesn't matter. Once again, photograph it and make notes of it in situ before you put it in the evidence bag better advice than that people so you photograph it you make your notes and i hope you're getting the theme of this when you're bagging it there is no universal way of describing what's in an evidence bag there isn't the fbi don't have the same as the cia which don't have the same as the afb they're very similar but there is no absolute one way of doing it you follow your workplaces process policies and procedures now, I'm chucking everything into a single bag here as I'm doing these demos. That's just for demonstration purposes. Things will go in separate bags. I'm just trying to move through. Otherwise, we'll be here till 11.30 tonight. Okay, so that that is very important. Um, coming up to my job of the week very soon. I've just got to go back into the other area. Uh, but before I do, condoms. Condoms are found frequently in the garbage audit, and I'm talking about used ones. So there's a used condom, it's quarter full. Now here we've got uh, several packets in a box. So naturally we'll get our notebook out and make a note of each one of these, where it was found, location, day, date and time, and the investigator's name. Then of course, we will take a photograph of it, put it in our sealed evidence bag and follow our organisational procedures and policies in relation to storage of that organic evidence. You were going to come across this, all right? So you're going to have needles, you're going to have used condoms, you're going to have all sorts of stuff in there. But remember, that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for stuff that's going to be useful. And what we're looking for is, let's have a look. Bank statements. Itineraries. Work documents. Now, this is where the public servants take them home. They think they're safe. They might tear them in half or rip them up. They could be put back together again and they throw it out in their home trash. So this is what we're looking for of these things. Business correspondence. Now, email's electronic. That's not going, but this is coming down to um, official letters sent out. It could be someone's awarded a major tender and they've, you know, taken home the copy of it and now they've just chucked it in the bin. Who knows? There could be diaries in there. Now, with all these things like diaries, uh, that what's really important is we can match up the handwriting. Now, you and I can't do that because we're not handwriting experts, but we will engage at Canberra, a handwriting expert, to do that for us. We're looking for receipts, and those receipts are going to be really important things. Now, there might be his and hers stuff in there that's, you know, we're relevant to the subject, the partner's not, that we're going to, you know, not use what's irrelevant. We're only looking for our subject stuff and what might be relevant. It could be more empty ammunition boxes. If ever I'm at a garage sale, I always buy the box, let them keep the ammunition, and I chuck it in my rubbish just to send a warning to people not to look in my rubbish. So, um, no, or never let an ammunition box lie around. Chuck it in your rubbish regularly. Okay, we'll go back just before we finalise that. We'll go back and have a look at some more jobs. I'm coming to my job of the week. It's coming soon. 
Um, ProCare are looking for licensed investigators down in Melbourne, factional investigators. Kerrigan's are looking for surveillance uh, in uh, operatives in Cairns, Townsville and Mackay. I think I already did that one, didn't I? Um, getting old. Brookside are looking for licensed investigators in Melbourne uh, for general insurance. And they're also looking for licensed investigators in Brisbane on the Gold Coast. People, you have just seen, what, 10 jobs for licensed investigators that have been advertised this week. Come on. Let's get um, in and start applying for them. They need you. They have a wealth of work there. So here is Mike Evans's job of the week. This is the job I want. Lewis Wanstall and Associates in Melbourne. They want an investigator for community services. Now, Christine down there, she looks um, after investigations uh, for... Uh, workplace matters, reportable conduct investigations. She does root cause analysis things, organisational reviews and more. So if you want a job that's really rewarding with some really good government or corporate argy-bargy, inappropriate behaviour, inappropriate conduct stuff that you can really get into in a factual investigation. And they're really easy to do because everything's governed by a process, policy or procedure in the workplace. And all you're doing is going out there and giving everyone a hearing and a chance to be heard and the witnesses as well. And you'll be able to do that because on the 4th of March, you will be doing, as part of your CPD, for your AirLap membership, a 90-minute program on how to do the piece model interviewing incorporated in cognitive interviews with conversation management. Now, that's coming direct from Pat Flynn and Mike Evans. Now, Mike Evans is an ex-police officer. He is not a qualified detective. If he was, he'd scare the living daylights out of everybody he ever interviewed and they wouldn't talk to him. So Mike Evans follows... Pat Flynn's training and Pat Flynn's guide in relation to how to do those interviews that ASIC finds so important, they're going out and training their people with a double degree in accounting on how to do them. And they are paying a fortune for it and they'll probably be in class for five days. You're going to A certificate, uh, not a certificate, can't do a certificate, sorry, a statement saying that you've completed it and you've passed an assessment on it for free just because you're a member of AirLap. If you're not a member of AirLap, get in touch with Casey and she'll arrange your membership badge. Um, so that's really important, people. So that's my job of the week. What did I do with it? There it is, down with Lewis Wonsall Associates in Melbourne. Hi, Christine, how are you going? Hope you're well. Um, don't ask Chris when you go to the job interview. Chris, what's your policy and process and procedure about uh, garbage pools and condoms? I wouldn't do that. Okay, that, that's not. Let's not do that. Only if it comes up will we approach our employers in relation to that. But certainly, yeah. And just to George's question, there, people don't believe in shredders. People make mistakes all the time. Innocent, innocuous force of habit mistakes and that's part of the fun of our as george would know part of the fun of our job is finding where people slip up my word it is and i'm coming back to that later on so thanks casey i really pretty pleased that you reinforced that thanks for mentioning it george spot on um anyway here we go two to go no only one to go last one what you'll find in domestic garbage Nappies are a constant when you're doing a domestic garbage audit. So here we have a uh, young baby nappy. Again, as always, we have our evidence bag. Put in the description, day, date and time, who found it. And prepare it to go into the evidence room. Again, follow your organisational policies, processes and procedures in relation to storage of organic evidence. So you will have a process, policy and procedure for it, but you're not keeping those things if they're irrelevant, okay? If they're a child kidnapper and they've got nappies in their domestic, well, that is relevant, okay? But relevance is decided on what's important. And, you know, we, we 
um, as investigators, we're looking for that evidence. We're looking when we do the garbage pull for receipts, for diaries, for packaging. What was stolen? What was it packed in? Why are all these empty packets of it in this person's garbage? We're looking for stuff that shouldn't be there. Confidential emails. Who's bribing who? So all that sort of thing could possibly be found in that garbage pool. And that's what we're looking for. So we are recording everything that's in there because we don't want to end up in court and go, what did you find in the garbage pool, mate? Uh, I found some uh, receipts and some um, incriminating documents. Okay, what else? That was all that was in there. So you just selected what was in there in your notes. There was nothing, no vegetable peels in there. There was no toilet paper rolls in there. You record everything that's in there at that time. That's why you have your notebook and your descriptions are very careful. You don't say they're penis enlargement pills just because that's what it says on the label. You say that's what it says on the label. They could be anything. They're white pills. There's 22 of them, all right? There's 23 of them, whatever it is. So corporate position vacant. Qantas are looking for a principal investigator down in Sydney. So that's great. Now, people, this is episode 131 of Spy Curious, and this advertisement vindicates me for everything I've done over the last 131 episodes of this program. It is a position vacant for an investigator with the RACQ in Brisbane. How have they vindicated me and what I do? They have said you are going to be part of the counter-fraud investigation unit. And every week we end with Operation Complete, all units return home. And the RACQ just said, Mike, you're totally 100% valid. Thank you, RACQ, with your counter fraud investigation unit. That was really, really kind of you. I'll take that one and <laughs> I'll put it in my application for Training Investigator of the Year. I'm going to beat Pat Flynn this year for the first time in years. Yeah, I'm really going for it. And RACQ has said, yes, Mike, you're right. They're units. That's, <laughs> That's a corporate internal investigation role. You won't need a licence for that um, because you'll be working for the RACQ internally. Um, uh, Director of Assessment Investigation Monitoring is for veterinary... Um, uh, medications and stuff like that down in Tamworth. That's a great job. If you get that job, they'll put you through the Diploma of Government Fraud Control at the Australian Security Academy, like all their other staff. That's pretty good. That's $2,900 qualification. Uh, multiple government investigators are for wanted for the um, Consumer Competition Division, and they are wanted in Sydney, Hobart, Melbourne, Perth, Brisbane and Adelaide. You're going to need a Certificate for in Government Investigation for that one, people. Home Affairs are looking for a senior investigator. They've got several positions. You must have a certificate for a government investigation. This is only in Victoria. And once again, if you get that role you'll have, to, and you haven't got the certificate for and you get the job because you've got a little bit of investigation background but you speak three languages, Home Affairs train all their staff through the Australian Security Academy and Certificate for and Government Investigations. So a little tip there for you. Um, in your application, make sure you <laughs> include a copy of your Certificate for and Government Investigation. Whew, been a very busy day. Casey just said it um, about people making mistakes, and it's my final thing in what I've been harping on about for the past two weeks. Historical sexual abuse in schools. Now, three weeks ago, I told you that it's really great um, with that, uh, whether it's 10 years ago, five years ago, 50 years ago, whatever, because you're in a class of 34 people and there's potential witnesses there that were there at the time that knew what was going on. And you have got a lot of people to go and talk to. It's not like they've all disappeared. They get on Facebook and have little school groups and they have kept their, you know, annual school thing and one person will lead to another 15 and you can go and interview them about what they saw or heard or what they knew and if they didn't know anything well you eliminate them so that's a historical sexual abuse um, positive is there's a lot of potential witnesses there and then I matched it up last week with the second part of historical sexual abuse which goes with time and event lines 
Now, everything marries to a time and event line. Nothing can happen without a day, date, time, place in our reality. Nothing can. And we'll talk about that during our Peace Model Cognitive Interview and um, Conversation Management Program on the 4th of March, which is free to everybody watching this who is a member of our um, industry association. Okay, And it's good enough for ASIC to make all their staff with double degrees in accounting to do. It's good enough for you as a member of AirLap, I'm telling you now. Okay, And there will be managers of investigation agencies watching this today who will be directing their staff to attend that program on the 4th of March. Seriously, there will be, because they've asked me about it. Now, what Casey said and what George said was people make mistakes. So this is the third part of our historical sexual abuse. The abuser gets bolder and bolder over time. Now, the abuse continues. It doesn't stop. It keeps on going. And eventually they'll slip up. Now, that slip up is they'll do the act in front of the wrong person. They'll put pictures up in their little pedophile groups online. They'll do or brag about it to someone and they'll be overheard. Those mistakes happen. No matter how good they think they are, they still make mistakes. Now, I have never met or seen the perfect perpetrator of sexual abuse that's got away with it without making some kind of mistake if it's happened on a uh, medium to large scale. So look for the mistake. That mistake will be there. You're the investigator. You've got the investigation because it can't be done on the phone and it needs hard evidence. All right. So look for the mistake. Look for what's missing in what they say during their interview that you do with them. And you'll be going through them with a cognitive interview. You really will because it's going back over time. You must know, and you will know when you're an Australian investigation student, Australian Security Academy student, that when to use a record of interview, when to use a witness statement, when to use a cognitive interview, when to use the peace model. You must know that. But with this one going into historical sexual abuse, you'll be doing cognitive interviews with people to get their cooperation. And that's where you'll find those mistakes. So Casey has given you an incredible tip on <laughs> OC today. I'm, like I said, I'm going to be using it three times. As soon as I hang up from here, I'm going to be using it three times. We've told you what we're looking for when we do that garbage pull. Now, it could be the hotel room garbage. It could be the factory garbage. Who knows? It could be the domestic garbage. We're looking for all these things that are relevant. So that's what we're looking for. You've been warned that there's going to be dog crap. You've been warned that there's going to be condoms. You've been warned there's going to be blood, all that sort of thing. So your safety is paramount. Don't go out and start doing garbage pools without safety equipment and approval from your employer. That is very important. So with that, Casey, have we covered everything we said we were going to cover? I believe so. I believe so. I don't know. We're eight minutes over time. Oh, George is going to be in trouble. You have to um, <laughs> you have to stay back after work today, George. Um, so we've gone eight minutes over time. Uh, I've done everything as far as our garbage pool. We're going to finish now uh, with our usual way because the RACQ in Queensland said, you're right, Mike, that's the way we have to finish. If you want to stick around after this, I'll show you how that video on the garbage pool that I did was actually done. So it's goodbye from Casey Pine. It's goodbye from Mike Evans. Thanks for watching. We'll have more information about um, our CPD points coming up. Here, I'll talk you through the garbage pool video. 
So the dog crap was three sausages from the supermarket. That's all it was. <laughs> I don't care. Uh, I'm not going to go feeling around in dog crap, putting it in bags and putting it in um, garbage bins for demonstration purposes. So disappointingly, um, our, our dog crap wasn't real dog crap. Our needles were all... Um, provided to me by, for, by a vet for our recently deceased uh, dog, which was 18 years old. There was no human growth hormone in the eyedropper. I made that up to be entertaining and try and make it a little bit interesting. This does get very, very boring. Um, <laughs> it's highly unlikely you'll come across human growth hormone unless you're into the Olympic Games. My blood on the bandage that I tasted and found was O positive. Everybody would relax and chill out. It was tomato sauce. <laughs> Not ever. <laughs> Touch something and then put your finger in your mouth. Again, I'm trying to be, I'm going for Investigation Instructor of the Year over Pat Flynn and I'm trying to be a little bit entertaining here, people, so do not do that. The pills, once again, these were all medicine provided to the vet for my aged dog and they were not pingers, um, I didn't try one and turn into a big love muffin and they weren't penis enlargement pills. Um, they were just simply pet medication just to make a point of how to describe what you find in there. You didn't see the vomit on the face mask. I had to eliminate that because it was too gross, but basically that was just oh. the soup. <laughs> when I put that in the plastic bag, it sort of exploded everywhere and... Um, it was just too gross to show, so I thought, well, you know, I might get banned from Facebook <laughs> or whatever. So the vomit wasn't vomit. It was just soup, and you didn't see it anyway, so you got nothing to complain about. Um, the 25% filled condom that I was waving around, if you saw it in between the white and everything, that was just a jar of hair shampoo or a plastic bottle of hair shampoo that I'm there out of camera filling up with. <laughs> That's the shampoo there and it's waving around in the condom. So everybody chill out. It wasn't real. There it is. <laughs> Don't panic when you're complaining to everybody about what I did for training purposes just to become investigation instructor of the year. Um, <clears throat> the nappy was simply, here we go. That's the condom with the hair shampoo in it. The nappy was simply, um, I'm using the nappy there to wipe off the shampoo that I spilled on the desk. <laughs> This is behind the scenes, people. The nappy was simply mustard from the supermarket. So everybody chill out. That's what it was. <laughs> it could have been a lot worse. I mean, I really could have gone mad with it um, and been a lot worse. And like I said, um, you know, they sell eyeballs in slime <laughs> today. I think I've deleted that picture so you can't see it. Oh, that's disappointing. But it was a lot of fun creating that video. It took a lot of time. Um, the essential things I want you to take away from that are recording, you know, the photography, and how to label. You follow your process, policy, and procedure. Casey, thanks for coming in today. You're more than welcome. Good to be back. That was a wonderful video. Would you mind replaying that, playing that for us again right now? And then we'll just say goodbye now. Casey will play that video. See you next week, people. Okay. Whoop. Uh, hang on. I'll just. <laughs> it up. Here we go. Private Investigator is about helping people find closure. Information is our main commodity. In a world seemingly dazzled by the latest proprietary databases and state-of-the-art electronic gadgets, a simple garbage pool remains an often overlooked avenue of inquiry. The number one reason public servants are sacked from their employment is inappropriate access to government databases, which is electronically recorded. The humble garbage audit can deliver documentary records. These include stolen property receipts, stolen property, packaging and or other relevant physical evidence in regards to other offences such as tender rigging, corruption or ghost invoicing. Federal and state police use these garbage audits extensively. Before you head out the door, make sure you're familiar with the law as it varies from state to state. You should be aware of local regulations that prohibit garbage pools. Regulations will generally relate to abandoned property issues. One of our academy instructors, Noel Lee, teaches an example of abandoned property using the beer bottle story. 
Like many states now, South Australia has a cash recycle system. The Scouts promoted the leaving of beer bottles out for collection in their local area and they took them to the recyclers for cash fundraising. A group of non-Scouts started going around and intercepting the beer bottles placed in boxes on the footpath for collection and the Scouts lost out on the income and complained to the police. SA Poll conducted a door knock of some areas and asked residents what intention they had with the beer bottles as to the recipients. The unanimous reply was, we don't care who takes them, we just want them gone. Therefore, the bottles having been abandoned in a public place, the footpath, were anybody's to take away. So don't forget, the office, factory, hotel room or domestic garbage bin is a wealth of evidentiary information. It sure is. And Casey Pine and Mike Evans, we'll see you again next week. Thanks for watching, people.